Welcome to the Walton Pi. This is my fourth video in my series on AP Pre-Calculus where I'm going through all the topics covered on the AP exam. Today we're going to be talking about the end behavior of functions. So up to now we've been discussing what we what I like to refer to as the internal behavior of the functions. We're talking about where is the function increasing? Where is it decreasing? Where is the function concave up or concave down? Where are the zeros of the function? Do we have any local extreme values? Like where are those different values? Where are the points of inflection? All of these things are internal behavior of the function. They happen at finite points, at finite places and finite values. Those are things that happen inside the function. What we're talking about now is going to be the end behavior. It's what happens to the function as inputs get further and further and further from zero, as the inputs head out towards infinity or head down towards negative infinity. That's what we're going to be talking about today with our end behavior of functions. So oftentimes, if we just graph the function, that tells us what the end term behavior of the function is. So if we look at this graph of a function, uh, this type of function is often called a witch of Agnesi. It's a weird story. Um, I'll probably talk about that at some point, and so if I ever do, there will be a card up in the corner. But right now what this is, is we can just look at this and see what happens as my inputs get really, really far from zero. And both cases, as x goes off towards infinity or down towards negative infinity, the limiting behavior, the end term behavior of this function is it's getting really close to zero. So it's just heading down to zero, and so that is the end behavior of the function. Now, polynomials have a lot of nice patterns to figure out their behavior. So let's just look at some polynomials and see if we can figure out those patterns. So here we go, we have both of these two polynomials. And both of them, if we head off towards either direction, they're heading up really, really fast. So both of these are heading off towards infinity. And the nice thing is both of them have the same end behavior. Now, the reason for this is because both of these functions are even degreed functions. The blue function is x squared minus three. That has a degree of two. The green function is x to the fourth minus four x cubed plus six x all over three. That has a degree of four. Both of those functions are, de are even degreed polynomials. And that means that both directions are going to do the same thing. So they're either both going to head off towards infinity or they're either both going to head down towards negative infinity. And that's always going to be true. The end behavior in both directions of an even degree polynomial is always going to be the same. Now, the end behavior of odd degree polynomials is different than that of even degree polynomials. So here we're graphing x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3. And in one direction, it's heading off towards infinity, and in the other direction, it's heading off towards negative infinity. So for odd degree polynomials, the end behavior is always going to be opposite. If one direction heads to infinity, the other direction heads to negative infinity, and vice versa. So that means that for polynomials, we just have to look at the leading term, or another, the coefficient of whatever our highest degree x uh, power is, to figure out the end behavior of the polynomial. So here we go, we got four different polynomials in green, purple, red, and black, and I've written down the equations for them there. So we have, first one is x cubed plus 20x squared plus 132x plus 285. This is an odd degree polynomial, so they're going to be doing different things as we head towards negative infinity or as we head towards positive infinity. And from the graph we can see it heads down as we head towards negative infinity and it heads up as we head towards infinity. So that tells us that as x goes towards infinity, the limit is going to be infinity. And as x goes towards negative infinity, the limit is going to be negative infinity. For our purple graph, negative x cubed minus 5x squared minus 7x that as x goes towards infinity, it's heading down. So that means as the limit of this function as x goes towards infinity, the value of that function is going to be heading towards negative infinity. And as the limit as x goes towards negative infinity, that means that the limit of the function is going to be heading towards positive infinity. Now for our next two, these are both even degree polynomials. The first one, x to the fourth minus 13x cubed plus 62x squared minus 128x plus 95, 
if we gr if we look as x goes towards infinity, that's heading up towards infinity. And as x goes towards negative infinity, it's still heading up towards infinity. And then the other function with a negative in front of the x to the fourth, that's going to be heading down towards negative infinity on both sides. So that means just by looking at is the coefficient of our highest degree x, is it plus or minus? That tells us exactly what the end term behavior of the function is going to be in both cases. Now, we're going to transition away from polynomials and introduce a new type of function. This function is going to be called a rational function, and this is just the quotient of two polynomial functions. So for example, x cubed minus 7 all over x minus 2. That's a rational function. It's a polynomial on the top divided by a polynomial on the bottom. We can say that every polynomial is considered a rational function, since we can just write a polynomial function as p of x over 1, since 1 is a polynomial. Now, I'm not going to dive a huge amount into rational functions, since that is a very large part of the next video. The next three sections are all about rational functions, so I'm going to talk a lot more about them in the next video. But for right now, we just need to know what they are. Now, we're going to now talk about what's the end behavior of rational functions. So we're going to look at x cubed minus 7 all over x minus 2. If I graph it, it looks like this. That's pretty weird looking. And if I zoom out, we see, oh, like that's even weirder. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Who knows what that's doing? But if I keep zooming out, I see, oh, apart from a little bit of weird stuff in the middle, this looks pretty close to x squared. And so because of that, that allows us to know, oh, I don't have to know a huge amount about what's going on on the inside. Again, that's going to be covered in the next video. But for my outside behavior, I just need to know kind of what does it roughly look like. And in this case, it mostly looks like x squared, so it's going to behave like x squared. So if we're trying to figure out what, what do we do for rational functions, we just have to figure out what's it look like really far away from the middle. Now, the way that we can do that is by just looking at the leading terms of the numerator and denominator. So for x cubed minus 7 over x minus 2, the leading terms are x cubed and x, so we just have x cubed over x, which simplifies to what we were seeing, x squared. Okay, And this fact can, be, can work for any rational function you have. The end behavior of a rational function is always going to be understood as the end behavior of the quotient of just the leading terms. So you can ignore anything that's not the highest power of x on the top and not the highest power of x on the bottom. So if the leading term of the numerator is the same degree as the leading term of the denominator, the end behavior of the rational function goes to a constant because, for example, if we have x cubed minus 7 over x cubed plus 2, the leading terms are x cubed and x cubed. We do x cubed over x cubed and we get 1. So that means the end behavior of this function is going to just be 1. So we would write that as the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals 1, and the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x, that's also equal to 1. We could also look at uh, this example. 8 minus 4x cubed minus 3x to the 4th all over 7x to the 4th plus 5x cubed minus 6. The leading terms, now leading term does not mean first term, it's the term of the highest power of x, which in this case is the negative x to the 4th over the 7x to the 4th, and we're going to get limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is negative 3 over 7, and the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x is also negative 3 over 7. Now, if the leading term of the denominator dominates the leading term of the numerator, meaning the leading term of the denominator is bigger, like a higher power of x, than the leading term of the numerator, then the end behavior of the rational function goes to 0. So if we have a rational function with a denominator of a higher power than the numerator, for example, 2 divided by x squared plus 1. x squared is a power of 2, whereas 2 is a power x to the 0. 2 is bigger than 0. In this case, we have the limit as x goes to infinity. That goes to 0. And the limit as x goes to negative infinity also goes to 0. I hope this video was helpful in understanding end term behavior of functions. 
Um, if it was, please like and subscribe. It really helps me to keep making these videos. And if there's other topics that you're confused on or would like a video, please leave that in the comment section down below. I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with all of your math.